Well, what's up, guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here with the one and done preview for the John Deere Classic. This is going to be a fun event. We are in the final tournament of segment three. Next week, we'll start segment four and we'll be the Open Championship. So next week will be absolutely vital to get off to a good start for the final stretch of the season. But where do we stand right now? So last week at the Greenbrier, we opted for a couple of favorites. Tony Finau, uh, 75920 is what he returned. Uh, Russ Henley, who flew up the leaderboards on Sunday with 197, 197,000. And then J.B. Holmes, kind of our... Um, you know, moral punt or uh, pride punt, I guess I called it last week, misses the cut and returns us $0. Our third lineup continues to be absolutely brutal. Um, this leaves us in basically the same spot that we were, that we were in. We have two um, middle of the road, kind of like top 40% lineups. And then we have one uh, almost in dead last. It's actually quite embarrassing. So we turn our attention to this week at the John Deere, which is going to open up a lot of different scenarios. This is the week where you can get a guy who's a very, um, with, with decent odds, odds that you wouldn't normally be able to get them with, and also the type of player that you'll never use again. Okay, so let me give you a specific example. Steve Stricker. Steve Stricker will be very, very popular this week. Because he has dominated the John Deere Classic in the past. Three-time winner. Um, you know, nine starts since 2018. He's just been out of his mind. If you want the full breakdown, go watch the DFS video. But Steve Stricker, 20-1. to It's really the only time you can and should use him. Right? I mean, he only plays a handful of events every year on the PGA Tour as it is already. And this one right up his alley. Then you get some of these other guys like, like Zach Johnson. Um, I have a little bit more respect for Zach Johnson. You can play him in, in different places, but you get him here as a, as a 12 to one shot. Um, Chesson Hadley, for example, Ryan Moore, guys that you would normally not be able to get at this price. And then even when you come down here, if you're taking other shots each week, there's some decent options. Sorry, my phone was ringing there. Okay, um, so you could get Chris Kirk. Uh, Andrew Landry is a guy who I actually uh, like a little bit. Um, guys, again, you, you have no reason to play otherwise, and they're, and they're not bad long shots here. So um, where am I going to go? And, and we'll, go, we'll go through one by one. My, my best lineup, I'm going to continue to throw out uh, the best player that I think is on the board. Um, and it's Bryson DeChambeau. I'm not even going to try to spell his last name. I'll, I'll do it later. Um, the reason we're going to go with Bryson, a couple things. Three straight top 25s. Four out of his last six events, or I guess five out of his last seven, um, playing really, really well. He's your defending champion. And if you go back through the DFS video, he really just popped up all over the place. Very quickly, you know, average DraftKings points gained since January 1st. I know that the one and done is not DraftKings scoring, but this shows that he's outpacing a lot of the fields that he's playing in. If we go to uh, strokes gained which is right here, in the last 10 weeks, only Francesco Molinari is better than Bryson uh, in, in strokes gain total, and Bryson's played twice as many rounds. Uh, this course obviously fits, you know, fits him, considering he's the defending champion, and to me, he's just the, like, the guy you got to play. He, he's the chalk here. I think, so, I think so many other owners are going to opt for someone else. Um, I'm, I'm just going to keep the pedal down on, on Bryson. After that, we're going to go with uh, Joaquin Neiman. So, unfortunately, the, the cat's a little bit out of the bag here on this kid. So, we, we might have missed it. But this is uh, essentially the weakest field that he's played in thus far. So, since really coming onto the scene, 6th place at the Valero, 8th, 6th, 17th, and 5th in, you know what, 8 starts on the PGA Tour. Um this is actually a good note. He does not qualify for PGA Tour stats yet. He hasn't played enough rounds, but I do have his strokes gain numbers, and they are right here. And you can see, you know, strokes gain total, uh, what's that, fifth best in this field in 22 rounds in the last 10 weeks. Um, he's losing strokes only around the greens, but you should not be missing greens here. Like, if you're missing greens, you're in big trouble anyway. You should not need to count on your around the green, uh, around the green numbers. So, so Neiman is going to be a guy who excites me 
Um, and let's check out his ownership real quick in this in this pool. So I, I think a lot of guys. Am I missing him? Here it is. So 17%, which mostly came uh, last week at the Greenbrier. So, so, so you can't really back him up, right? You can't play him back-to-back -back weeks. Um, DeChambeau's already been used by 31%, so that's 31% of the field that can't use him. Uh, Molinari was very popular the week that he won, 21%, essentially all of it coming at the Quicken Loans. And then who else might be interesting here? Stricker's going to be very popular. His number will jump up. Who else is a favorite? Zach Johnson, where's he Where's he gone this year? 22%. So really, you have your, your pick of the litter. Um, now, my, my last pick is probably... I, I don't know if it's the most interesting, but it's, it's again... I'm in such a bad situation in this third lineup that I need to find a player who's going to win this and be the only guy on him, right? Like that's my goal in the last leg of the, of the segment of segment three, which I cannot win. I'm trying to gain a million dollars by myself and, and, and increase my season long total. Like that's my goal here. Um, I understand that is a, a tough thing to do. Um, and I'm going to go with, uh, Brian Gay. And the reason for that is he's right here. So he's 60 to one Vegas, but he's actually like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, look at these finishes four top twenties in his last six starts, making a ton of cuts. And if we go back to this strokes gain tool, uh, Brian Gay is right here. Okay. What's that? Like the 10th, 12th, 12th most strokes gained in the last 10 weeks. So playing really, really well. Um, Honestly, I would have liked to have played Kyle Stanley here. If you go back and watch the DFS video, a um, uh, lot of good things to say about Kyle Stanley. I've already used him in this lineup, so can't do that. Um, Joel Dahman, I thought, would have been fine, but I think he might be more popular. Uh, Chess and Hadley, same thing. I think Had Hadley's going to be pretty popular. I like, I like the spot that he's in. Almost considered Aaron Wise here, and almost considered Ches Reevee. Um, I've actually already played Reevee in this lineup. And I have not played Aaron Wise, but um, I'm going to settle for Brian Gay and hope that I am the only person in the field on him and that he somehow finds a way to win this in a, in a weak field. Uh, you do not need to be long off the tee here. So Brian Gay, this is, this is the course for you, buddy. All right, that's it. Let me know who you guys are going with this week. I'll talk to you soon and good luck.